I'm not ashamed. What was the price of redemption for a Hebrew who sold himself as a slave to a foreigner? This is a question and we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Leviticus on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Leviticus 25. We're going to be reading from verses 47 to 55. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Leviticus 25, beginning at verse 47. Now, if a sojourner or stranger close to you becomes rich, and one of your brethren who dwells by him becomes poor, and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner close to you, or to a member of the stranger's family, after he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or anyone who is near kin to him in his family may redeem him, or if he is able, he may redeem himself. Thus he shall reckon with him who bought him. The price of his release shall be according to the number of years, from the year that he was sold to him until the year of Jubilee. It shall be according to the time of a hired servant for him. If there are still many years remaining, according to them, he shall repay the price of his redemption, from the money with which he was bought. And if there remain but a few years until the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him, and according to his years he shall repay him the price of his redemption. He shall be with him as a yearly hired servant, and he shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed in these years, then he shall be released in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. For the children of Israel are servants to me. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. In this chapter, we've been talking about the observances of the sabbatical year, which occurred every seven years, and the jubilee year, which occurred every 50 years. During both of these years, the land was to lie dormant and not to be planted or harvested. However, with few exceptions, during the jubilee year, any land that had been sold was to be returned to the original owner. This showed that in actuality, land in Israel was not really sold, but rather leased to another, due to the fact that God owned the land and gave it to them. They thus didn't have the right to sell it permanently. Beginning in our last lesson, we've been specifically discussing slavery in Israel and how that related to the Jubilee year. We noted that although the Bible doesn't command slavery, doesn't even recommend it, however, since that slavery already existed, the law of Moses was going to regulate it. If an Israelite sold himself to another Israelite, they were not to be treated as a slave, but as a laborer and they would only serve until the Jubilee year, at which point they would be released. However, if a foreigner sold themselves to an Israelite as a slave, then the Jubilee year would not act to release that foreigner. They would be a permanent slave, but Israel was not going to be allowed to abuse their slaves. Coming out of verse 47, we find a situation where an Israelite sold themselves as a slave to a foreigner. What is being talked about here is a foreigner who had settled in Israel. Why would God's law apply to a foreigner? because they were dwelling in Israel. I currently live in Canada and am subject to its laws. When I travel to the United States, even though I am not a resident, I am subject to its laws as long as I am there. I cannot say that because something is legal in Canada that I am therefore able to do so in the United States when that country might consider what I want to do illegal. No, I am subject to the laws of the country in which I am in. So too here with the foreigner. The law of Moses was the law of the land in Israel, so even the foreigner would be subject to the laws that applied to them, and slavery was one of those laws. Part of the law that the foreigner needed to understand was that an Israelite slave could be redeemed by a member of the family or close relative, or he could even redeem himself. The redemption price would be reckoned based on the proximity to the Jubilee year and the price of a hired servant. If the Jubilee year wasn't close, then the redemption price would be high, but as the Jubilee year drew closer, the redemption price decreased. This would make sense, for if we make a contract with someone, usually there are clauses inserted concerning payment that will need to be made should either party wish to break the contract. Those penalties will be larger if the contract is sought to be broken towards the beginning of the contract, and smaller if the contract is sought to be broken towards the end of the contract. If the slave wasn't redeemed before the Jubilee year, then he, along with his family, would be released once the Jubilee year came which would certainly be something that the foreigner needed to be taught. Another thing that the foreigner needed to learn was the way that he was to treat an Israelite. He was not to rule over, an, over the Israelite with rigor, but treat him as a yearly hired servant. This was key, for in the land of Israel, all Israelites had rights, even slaves. 
A foreigner had to obey these laws or they wouldn't be able to live in Israel. The reason for these rules concerning how Israelites were to be treated was because the Israelites were servants to God, servants that God brought out of Egypt. Therefore, they were to be treated the way God desires. This brings us to the end of section four of this book. The Lord willing, in the next episode, we'll begin our look at the fifth and final section of Leviticus, which covers chapters 26 and 27 and deals with final exhortations. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Leviticus 26, verses 1 to 13, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.